Hello, everybody. I'm Kurt Theobald, and this is the Llama Commerce Show. This is our fourth edition or something like that. Episode number four. And uh, we're hailing here from the Quattro. We're going to call this the Quattro mm -hmm. Show. Uh, we're hailing from Classy Llama Studios. I'm the Chief Executive Officer and the Chief Strategist at Classy Llama. And I'm Brett Curry, and I am the Lead Strategist right. at Classy Llama. I hate to remind everybody, but that is one notch below the Chief Strategist, and I Regret think it's important. Regrettably, it is. Up. But that doesn't mean that you always have better ideas. Okay, but but this is still in the middle and not for long. It's going That's to be on true. my site soon. Okay, so good. the trophy indicates who is doing the best job of delivering value to the audience yeah. and who is smarter and better looking as well, um, which probably puts it a little bit over here anyway. Uh, so in our zeal to deliver more value to you, we are doing this show relatively unscripted. I jotted down this a couple raw, of things. This, this is, is pretty raw. raw. I mean, you're yeah. getting just us. Uh, normally, we're unbelievably organized. It's oh, all scripted, teleprompted. I mean, yeah. it's so it, it's word to the point of word. being fake. It's not even our ideas. <laughs> we just read what other people have written and, we're, we're and read fed it to this you. From script writers. We're like politicians. They choose us only because of how we look. Yes, we look yes. so great, and we have those those noble brows and and jaws and the beards too. Believe. I think the beards really the, sell it. That's true. That's true. So Although true. I've heard that beards actually make you less trustworthy, which is why so few presidents. Have beards. Really? Yeah. They, they kind of make you look tougher, though. It has to depend on. Would, you trust, would you trust a lumberjack without a beard? I, would you trust him to cut down a tree? If I they didn't don't have trust a beard? lumberjacks with beards. Okay. <laughs> Are we cutting down trees? This is our show. This is what happens when <laughs> we go wrong. This is why we go uh, This is go why wrong. we have these yeah. tight scripts teleprompted and we just read stuff. Exactly. But what are we talking about today? So today we're talking about something that's absolutely critical for merchants, for e-commerce uh, owners. And this is something we run into all the time. A lot of times merchants will come to us because they're not getting the performance they want to get. Mm -hmm. They're not reaching the sales goals they mm -hmm. have. They know they've got this great product potentially this great brand, mm -hmm. and they know it's underperforming. And they have and, all these ideas on yeah. what they can do to make it, to, to make it exactly. go, but what we find is that behind all of that, there's something missing. Something is missing. And so, just to lay this out there, our purpose for this show, we want to reemphasize this every time, but our goal is to demystify e-commerce into digestible, actionable bites. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to take this big topic of finding out what your core is, what your brand is, and we want to put that into little actionable bites so that you can make changes. So I'm going to put this back over on your side because you got us back on track. Thank you. Well yes, done. I did. Very good. So um, we're going to try to keep this really simple because it is simple. It's just not easy to yeah. get to the core of your brand. Um, so we've defined a couple of key questions that you can really hone in on, um, and, and you got to answer these questions. And this is important because if you don't get this right, then even if you're successful in a short-term context, yeah. it, 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 will, it isn't sustainable. Not sustainable. It's not sustainable in a business success huge. unless you have those that, that core that you're pivoting from. Yeah. So the first question is, what can you own? What so can you ask own? yourself, what can we own yeah. in, in the business? So think about the brands that are really highly successful, that are talked about, that are exciting, that are lively. Mm -hmm. Um, and we may not even like all the brands, but... Maybe not, uh, but, but we can still respect what they've done. That's right. So um, let's start with Amazon. Uh, Amazon is a company that has just exploded, continues to explode. You can see it in, in the stock price, and frankly, you can probably see it in how frequently you've purchased from Amazon in the past 12 months as well. Yes, yes. I went to Amazon just last week, uh, maybe it was the week before last, but I was analyzing it for uh, some of our clients to identify different ways that they could compete effectively with Amazon. Mm -hmm. While I was doing research, I bought two things! <laughs> yeah. It's like, whoa, mind-blowing! They, they, they are masters at that. And what they started doing in the beginning, and you know, they lost money for a really long time. Yep. You know, they're masters at having everything available. So anything you want to buy in any category, it's there. So you can find it. But they're also really efficient and low cost mm -hmm. and the shipping options and, and they just they weave it all together. They're, yeah. they're really masterful. They were focused on being efficient, low cost, easy access to what you want, when you want it, and fast. Fast shipping was it became yep. a key part of that. But that all that was a strategy. That's important to understand. Differentiate between your core value proposition and your strategic focus. Mm -hmm. The shipping thing was a strategic focus that they had, yeah. uh, not actually their core value proposition. The core value proposition was what you want, when you want it, at a low cost, super yeah. fast. That's, yeah. that's what they were after. Yeah, so they're great. Another great example is Zappos. And Zappos has since been acquired by Amazon. They're now an Amazon company. But what they realized they could own in the very beginning was service. Mm -hmm. They could take care of people and just be fanatical about service. That's where you mm -hmm. can 
order five pairs of shoes, try them all on, ship all of them back except the one that you actually want, mm -hmm. and you pay nothing on shipping uh, to get them or to return them. Yep. They also did expand their selection, so they focused on wide selection. But really, what they owned was service. Mm -hmm. They knew they could do that. There's well. a lot of people that had wide selection. Lots of vendors have wide selection. Lots of merchants. Yeah. But Zappos went above and beyond and said, "How can we delight the customer?" Yeah. And you hear you heard all sorts of stories about how their customer service reps were given the freedom to love their customers mm -hmm. and and go outside of the box. And you know that that was Zappos. Yeah. Um, not to mention the amazing shipping policy that yeah, made it yeah. that, that differentiated them. But again, the shipping was a strategic outpouring of their core value, their core focus, Absolutely. who they were, their brand identity. Absolutely. Uh, so there's a lot of examples and it's a great place to look, but we want to come back to your brand and make sure that we're equipping you to actually answer these questions about your brand. Yeah, so we're talking to a, a sports merchant. I won't get into details on the, on the category, but they're competing, you know, a smaller company competing with some really large category killers in the sports space. Mm -hmm. And what they determined they were really good at, because the owner was a, a collegiate athlete, and some of the people on their staff are collegiate athletes, what they want to focus on is team sports. Mm -hmm. And so helping to dress and get equipment for teams. And so that, that's their passion, that's their focus, that's what they can own. They can be the team outfitter mm -hmm. in their particular space. And so that's what we're directing them to. We feel like that's going to be a lot better approach than what they were trying to do online, which was just sell everything and try to compete with Amazon and, and other And they had to answer the categories. question, what can we own? It what was, can we own? Be honest about your current position. Where are you at? What, take inventory. What are you, where are you positioned? What are you good at? What kind of team do you have? What strengths yeah. does that team have? And, and, and extend from that reality to define what you can actually own, yep. and be honest, as, as just as importantly, what you cannot own, what you yeah. can't be yeah. best at. Weeding that out is just, just as helpful as finding what you can own, finding what you cannot own, and getting rid of that. So you, have to, look, you have to look inside yeah. your organization, but you also have to look outside and say, what are the market problems that we can exactly. solve? What are the needs, wants, and, 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 and desires of the market that yeah. you can solve? What, really is, the, really what well? is the market hungry for? Mm -hmm. Where is there a need or a gap where the marketplace is not being served? And how, does, how do we find that intersection of what we do really well mm -hmm. and what the marketplace needs? And if you so. find that alignment between what you internally are structured well to do and to deliver and where the market has a lot of need, a lot of demand, a lot of un, unmet desire, and you find that alignment, that is a recipe for success. Absolutely. And, and then you just got to focus on that and pour your energy and resources into that. You just, I mean, as small merchants, you don't have the resources required to take a bunch of shots all at once. You've got to focus and take those few shots yeah. and take them really, really well. Um, so then finally, if you feel like you got it, if you feel like you figured out that alignment, the final piece to know whether you really have a solid value proposition, a solid core identity, is to try to communicate it. And if you cannot communicate it succinctly, shortly, briefly, clearly, yeah. in an elevator pitch kind of thing, yep. you know, 10 yep. seconds or less, 10 seconds or less, yeah. then you're missing it. In a few words, ideally. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, because if you can't communicate it clearly, and a great litmus test would be to talk to someone in your industry, not on your team, not in your company, but someone who is maybe a prospect for what you're selling, and communicate that to them and see how it resonates. Does it move them? Mm -hmm. So when you're trying to share this message of, hey, this is what we feel like we can own, does that resonate with them? Yeah. Are they scratching their head? Mm -hmm. Are they left kind of saying, eh, whatever? Or does it really move them? So if you can't clearly communicate it, then you probably don't own it. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be able to clearly, compellingly communicate that. Absolutely. So we'd like to hear what challenges you're facing, uh, what kind of, uh, what are the opportunities in your market space um, you know, use this as a as a, a sounding board for what you're thinking about your core brand identity and where you fit into the market. And uh, we'll give you our feedback, yeah. and uh, we'd be happy to talk about it and think through it. Absolutely. Um, what challenges you faced in trying to find that core identity? And honestly, we'd love to hear stories if you're willing to share it of where you've tried to go mm. in a core with your core identity and failed. That's yeah. so valuable to understand, and if you know why, we'd love to know why as well, and we'd love to be able to share those stories. Yeah, or if you feel like you've really nailed it, if you feel like you've, you've oh, got yeah, I guess it, success. then share that as well. well share that, and, we'll, and we'll highlight that. We'll put we'll You're so that positive on the show. here. This yes. is even further on your side. You're so positive. Wow. Yes. I'm being beaten badly. I think this is two shows in a row, buddy. You took the first two. That's true. I'm taking We're even the second Steven. two. Even Steven. Okay. And what will happen next? I don't know. That's what everybody's asking. Okay, Probably so we'll have, we'll have a... We'll have a tiebreaker coming up here in the fifth show. In the meantime, you can reach out to us on Google Plus, our Google Plus page, uh, our YouTube page. We're continuing to expand our social media tentacles, so we'll have more opportunities for you to interact with us. 
Uh, but you only need one really, so uh, feel free to reach out to us, ask questions about anything e-commerce related. Um, you know, we just we'd love to hear what you're wanting to hear. We we don't like guessing either. We like to know what exactly. does the market need. What does the marketplace need? Yeah, we're gonna try to do the same thing with this show. What exactly. can we own? And what burning questions can we answer? And that's what we're going to try to do. That's right. So share your thoughts, share your questions, what's challenging you. Uh, and uh, we, we'd be happy to address those questions on our show. Um, and uh, in the meantime, you can check out our sponsor, Classy Llama Studios, at classylama.com. Uh, really appreciate the, uh, them slash us giving us our own space. Yeah. This is weird. It was really kind of us. Yeah, it really was kind of us. <laughs> kind of us to This is like studio. self-plugging. With the sponsor that is... We're talking about ourselves in third person right now. Yeah. Yeah. I really think Brett's that Classy really Lama is right amazing. For, yeah. 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 Kurt feels pretty good about it, too. He's the CEO of Classy Lama. He's a sharp guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty good looking really... as well. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so That's thanks for joining us today. And um, and we'll uh, we'll see you next time. In the meantime, have any questions, feel free to drop us a line. And with that, stay classy. And we'll talk to you soon. Keep it classy. That's keep what we're closing. We're not closing with keep steak. It, keep it classy. This is the fourth show, and, and he doesn't understand that it's keep See, it classy. See, I'm following uh, Ron Burgundy. We're going to have to restart. The show, and, and so... Ah, yeah. I see. Sorry, I, I saw that one time maybe, and I don't remember. Okay, we'll, we'll say We've keep bombed it the end again. Yes, we, we always have. bomb Dang the end of the show. Sure.